Hey everybody, welcome back to the Journeys in Middle-Earth, and we are about to start exploring. And if you just skipped straight here and didn't want to watch all the setup, because there was a lot of it, wow, um, here's the situation. Bilbo the Musician, because I chose to take on the role of Musician instead of Burglar, because Bilbo didn't want to be typecast, has teamed up with Barabor the Ranger, who is a Pathfinder. There has been a series of thefts in, a ho in Bag End, or not Bag End, in Hobbiton, in the Shire, and our heroes are investigating what is afoot. And we've got a little bit of the world set up, and um, Bilbo is ready to start singing his endless medley. And Barivor is ready to be a trailblazer or go and or go into hiding whenever she should need. Now, let's go ahead and zoom in on this map a little bit because in case we've forgotten what all these tokens represent, we can just click them. And let's see. We note the garb mimics, because uh, th these are mysterious people over here that, if I recall correctly, just stepped out of a tomb. The garb mimics that of uh, the Brelanders, but their accent is varied. They're not merely local riffraff. I pause and consider what is the best approach. Now, I don't have to do that at all. I can cancel. The rules say we can just go on ahead and look and try to get a little bit of information. These uh, these uh, flowers over here, oh, still just dark red flowers surrounding an ancient stone. So, uh, if you don't remember what they are, you can go on ahead and look. But we're ready to start playing, and playing is super duper simple. Uh, players de decide who's going to be first, and everybody finishes their turn before the next player goes. And on your turn you get to do two actions. And then, after everybody has gone, there will be a shadow phase and a rally phase. And the actions, uh, you can do two, you can do the same one. We could travel, attack, or interact. And really, kind of attacking is a form of interacting, right? So it's really a, a travel or interact with the world. And you can do that twice. Two travels, uh, two interacts. And interestingly, a travel, which allows you to move two spaces, you can interrupt a travel action to do your second action and then continue with your first action afterwards. So anyway, what are we going to do? Well, there's a book right here at our feet. And perhaps we should say Barivor will start. No, 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 no. Barivor can go into hiding. I think Barivor is going to head over here and um, talk to these mysterious uh, folks that are stepping out of the tomb. So, first of all, Barivor is going to travel, which means she can move up to two steps. She will move one. You can see we crossed that line. And her travel isn't over. She can move away, but she's going to interrupt that travel and interact. Boop! Alrighty. So, you pause and consider what's your best approach. Well met, friends. Sneak up and eavesdrop. Step away from the tomb or else. Or cancel and don't actually do any of this stuff. So, you gotta assume there's gonna be some trouble here, folks. So, what should we do? Should we... Oh, let's just be friendly. Surely. What, what, what could go wrong? Well met, friends. The group turns on you. Weapons and stolen goods in hand. As you suspected, these are the thieves you seek. And they're ready to slay you where you stand. Gain one inspiration. Well, I, I, I guess I... Uh, I got the inspiration because, you know, I took the high road. I assumed the best of people. That inspired me. Uh, then, discard this person token. And you might think, well, what's next? Well, your enemy shows no sign of mercy, nor any inclination they will accept the same in return. With malice in their eyes, they raise their weapons, ready to defend what they have stolen. Place two ruffians, as indicated. Ruffian? And a ruffian. Okay. Hey, you guys look. You guys don't look very friendly at all. I, but, oh, that's okay. Place two ruffians as indicated. Objective updated. Defeat the ruffians. Okay. So, um, I still can move. So, what the heck? Let's run away and move back over here to hang out with Bilbo. All right. Barivor is done. Although, during her turn, if there are no enemies in her space, and there are not, we've moved away from the bad guys, then um, you can discard this skill for you and each other hero in your current space to become hidden. Barivor says, quick, Bilbo, let's hide! And so, we're going to go on ahead and discard that, and both Bilbo and Barivor are hidden. Ha-ha! <laughs> let's see, uh, let's see, uh... Okay, that means we'll be able to get the drop on them. Because if you are hidden, if you are attacked, before you test, prevent all damage and discard this boon. Alternatively, when you attack, you can discard this boon to add one success. So being hidden is not bad. But anyway, Barivor is now done. And Bilbo sets up to the plate. At which point Bilbo says, run away! Um, he doesn't have to. The interesting thing is, if Bilbo were, first of all, to move, 
to come over here. As soon as you step into either of these spaces, we will reveal whatever that Explorer token portends. So, should we do that? Because then he could move back here. Um, he could go on ahead and move into the area and get first strike, knowing that he's got a guaranteed success because he is sneaking around in the shadows. Instead, I could just interact with this mysterious book that's in the area. Or I could move over here and check out the flowers. Those are really kind of my options at this point. Hmm, do I want to start a fight? Let's see here. Um, so, I could also, during my turn, I can discard The Road Goes Ever On and sing a little song, which means I can discard this and uh, myself and each hero that are nearby, which means in a space with me or in a space next to me, if there's a line between you, that's considered nearby, I could move both of us one space. So I could move Bear of War again. I could run both of us away and let those guys come to us, so just so we don't bother with them. Um, and then at the end of my turn, I could discard my Endless Medley to get my Road Goes Ever On um, reflected. So we could just keep running away from these guys if we wanted. But that's not what you guys are here to see, right? You guys are here to see a fight, aren't you? I, th I think you kind of are. All right, then. Um, Bilbo says, damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. Sting, sting, sting. He moves on in. And remember, I've got two steps. So first of all, I've moved. I'm going to interrupt my movement and do my other action, which is attack. Although... Before we attack, let's think about this a little bit. I have drawn one of my three successes. So I've still got three successes in this deck. Plus, I know I have a guaranteed success uh, because I'm attacking from being hidden. Um, and I also have some Inspiration. Inspiration can turn a failure card, like Unyielding Spirit that has the Inspiration token, into a success. So I'm feeling like I've got a pretty good shot at attacking these bozos. So. Um, let's start my second action, and after I'm done, I'll decide whether I'm going to move away or, or just uh, stop. I'm going to go on ahead and attack, which means I click on these little guys right here. Uh, ruffians, they have five hit points. They have no armor, so I just every point of damage I do just goes straight to them. And what do I do damage with? I've got my dagger. One success will let me do two hits. If I get two successes, it'll let me do three hits that pierce. Although they don't have armor, so piercing isn't going to help. If I get three successes, I could do both of these things and get five hits and take one of these guys out. So, let's do it. I am going to attack. And this dagger uses wit. You can see it's got the wit icon up here. you got to be smart to use a dagger. And it just so happens... Bilbo's pretty witty. He's got four, so that means I get to draw four cards and try to get as many successes as possible. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Uh, show me success. Alrighty. One, two, three successes. Wow. Plus one more success is four successes. Zoinks. Alrighty. So, that means um, I'm going to hit... Uh, first of all, alrighty, um, let's go on ahead and start doing my results. I'm going to spend two of those four successes to activate piercing and do one, two, three hits. And then I've got another success to do another uh, two hits. And I've got another success, which will... Let's see, I have four. Yeah, so actually I should just do this one twice. But, of course... I totally forgot, very important, I can only use each one of these actions once in a given attack. So, I'm doing way overkill with four total successes, but here's the thing. Hidden, it says, when you attack. That means I can wait until, I don't have to commit to this, discarding it to get an extra sex, until after I've seen. That's what win means. So... I don't have to discard this. I can stay hidden. I got three successes. I'm doing five points of piercing damage. And I'm still hidden so that I can slough off any damage when they counterattack. Woohoo! So, let's do it. Way to go, Mr. Baggins. Apply. Apply five hits. Confirmed. Alrighty. Remove one ruffian. Just like that. This is the Bilbo you remember, right? Just going on and just uh, jumping out of the... Bushes and just killing random humans or ruffians? Alrighty. Now, can the enemy attack? This means they get to counterattack. And the answer is yes, they can. If Bilbo had been um, you know, attacking from a distance with a ranged weapon and this guy didn't have a ranged weapon, then he wouldn't be able to counterattack. But as it is, he can. So I have to say yes. 
The ruffian circles around you uh, to find an opening. He wields a dagger caked with the dried blood of its previous victims. And I have the chance to negate this two wounds that he's got coming my way. Um, which means I have to do a test with my agility. So, uh, my agility... Uh, basically, I, I can draw three with agility, and every success I get stops one of these wounds. So let's do it. Uno, dos, tres. Although, I think I've only got one more success, right? Because I, uh, I drew pretty much all of them. And nope, I did not get any. But remember, inspiration can turn a failure into a success. So, I will go on ahead and use this inspiration to say Clever Wit was a success. So that means I successfully avoided one of these wounds, and I only have to draw one from the wound deck, which are all kinds of debilitating things that might happen. Let's see what the one wound I take is. It is fever! All right, discard one inspiration. Oh, no problem, I don't have any. Then flip this card face down. Oh no, uh, Mr. Bilbo has a fever. And it's face down, but there might be effects that cause it to come back face up and affect me again in the future until I can eventually get rid of it. All right, so it's a good thing I only took one. Although, wait, I forgot. I could have, I was hidden. I could have prevented all of that damage. But that's okay, I'll just stay hidden. Um, right. Let's see. Or, or, if you are hidden before... Let's see. Or can I do... Do I have to do this? If you are attacked before you test... No, actually, no, I can't. I have to do this. There's no May on here. So that meant I did not have to bother with the one, two, three. I was hidden. He found me hidden. So I didn't draw three to try to negate. I just d lost my hidden because he saw me. And that meant all the damage was negated. And therefore, I did not do that test. Alrighty. Fair enough. Silly me. Alright, I'm no longer hidden. I'm out in the open, but he can't touch me. One of his friends is dead. And let's just go on ahead and shuffle the rest of these so I don't know what's coming. Except for, of course, the one that was at the bottom. Alright, anyway, though. So, confirmed. And now, that was all my, quote, interaction. I interacted with the guy, i.e. I attacked him. And now, I'm still moving, moving. Let's go on ahead and run away! Okay. So, I am done. Uh, the, the heroes... Are finished. We've both done two actions, and now we move on to the shadow phase, where enemies activate. Darkness is resolved, if necessary, and threat increases. Threat events are activated if threats reach a threat hold. So, let's see what darkness has in store. The midnight hour is close at hand. In the action phase, confirmed. Shadow phase. The shadow deepens, though hope yet endures. Threat increases by five. Now, the threat, which is the timer of a given mission, increases based on several things. The number of players there are, the number of um, unexplored zones there are, and various and sundry things. You know, and this is something the app just kind of takes care of automatically. Continue. You can see it's starting to fill up there. And, oh, the bad guys didn't do anything. Because, of course, he was already exhausted. Because he counterattacked me, that exhausted him. If I had not come in here and killed the one and the other guy had attacked me, this guy would have, because he hadn't been exhausted, the app would have told us what he would have done, who he would have tried to attack, etc., etc. But anyway, it's um, the second round. Each player resets their deck, so everything that was discarded goes back in, we shuffle it up, and then we scout two. Once again, this happens at the beginning of every round. Uh, so you never... Sometimes you might, if you do have a really active turn, but you rarely make it all the way through your deck in a given round. And uh, just because you've got some card that's super duper important to you doesn't mean it's going to get drawn because your deck keeps getting reset round after round. But hey, that also means you get the opportunity to scout. One, two. And hey! Um, now this is interesting. I'm, a golem is still out there following me. This is very distracting. I could just go on ahead and put it at the bottom of the deck. and Which means next round it might bother me again and prevent me. Or I could actually ready it. I can have up to three cards readied. Now this gives me no benefit, but it means I've gotten it out of my deck. So it won't bother me anymore until it's uh, gone away. Maybe I'll just do that. 
And then I've got my honed ability. When I test agility, I can discard this skill to add one. I mean, I could prepare this if I think I'm going to do an agility test right now. Like, I don't know, um, you know, picking a lock or what have you. I don't think I have that coming. I'm going to put this at the bottom of the deck, and I am literally going to ready Golem. He doesn't do anything for me, but he won't be pestering me anymore, although I have wasted one of my prepared slots. Meanwhile, Barabor says, what do I got? Show me what you got. All right, her clever wit or into hiding. That into hiding was pretty handy. Let's go on ahead and get that back again. And let's uh, bury the clever wit. The clever wit, which is if you do a wit based test, you can have an automatic success. Clever wit is very handy for Bilbo because his weapon uses wit. Um, Barivor's weapon, or two handed staff, uses agility. So she would have liked to have that agility. But anyway, that's that. And um, we are done scouting. Action phase! Here we go, here we go, here we go again. Let's see here. Barivor is hidden. So, she uh, is safe from a counterattack the way Bilbo was. So let's have her go again first. First of all, she'll start moving. She still has movement afterwards, right? And, um... Yeah, because she's only done half of her movement. She's going to go on ahead and attack Mr. Big Bad um, from being hidden. So, let's attack again! I said, boop. There we go. All right, one ruffian remains. Oh, by the way, I totally forgot to mention. When Bilbo was over here, and he decided to run away, he there was the potential that he would provoke the enemy. Um, if you ever try to interact with something in a space where there's an enemy, or you try to leave an area with an enemy, they will become provoked. And if you want to know what that means, the game comes with a wonderful rules reference guide that's just alphabetized. So you can just look up anything you want. If you're trying to remember, hey, what about provoked? And I'm trying to remember, can an exhausted enemy be provoked? Because, of course, this guy was exhausted because he'd already counterattacked. So was there a provoke hit on the way out? When the hero's in the same space as the enemy, certain actions will cause them to attack. Uh, selects the left most... Yeah, yeah, yeah. If a hero's just uh, move out uh, after provoking... Enemy groups are provoked in this way. Hero, If a hero wishes to interact after provoking... I don't see anything. You know what? I think, even though he was exhausted, enemies are provoked in this way if the hero is interacting with component. All right. Let's look exhaustive, because I'm trying to remember. Like I said, it's been over a month since I played the game. And, um, you know, this is a part of the game, too. Looking up those little uh, rules. A readied enemy can activate during the shadow phase. When enemy is exhausted, the portrait is, is, uh, cannot activate, cannot... Oh, yeah. And, uh, it cannot be provoked. An exhausted enemy cannot be provoked. This is a godsend. The game actually comes with two rule books. A fairly short, quick, and easy one that teaches you the basics of how to play. And then this kind of encyclopedia where if you need to know a specific thing, you can look it up, like I just did. So, I know um, he was exhausted, so he couldn't provoke. Anyway, so, Barabor is going to move in, is going to attack, and, right, Barabor's staff requires agility. She doesn't have any agility, unfortunately. And, um, right, and her agility is three. So she's going to get to draw three, and she can bump that up if she needs to, because she's in hiding. One, two, three. She sneaks up on the guy, and she gets zero successes. Ouch. Uh, because she is impeded. Alrighty. Well... She will go on ahead and spring out of the bushes. This gives her one success. She will spend her inspiration. That gives her two successes. So she has two total successes, which means she can spend up. Uh, you notice here, she can spend one success to get two hits, one success to get two hits, two success to get three hits, and stun the guy. Um, so she could spend the two, or she has only two, correct? So that would be enough to do four, wouldn't finish the guy. And he could counterattack, so she'll spend the two to stun him. Which means she will do one, two, three hits and stunning. Stunning. There we go. And so she spent all, th all two of her successes that way. Apply. Apply the three hits. Boom. He's down to two hit points. And since he's stunned, he is not going to counterattack. And you can see he is now um, completely blacked out. He is not going to bother us for the rest of this round. So since he's exhausted, Barivor can walk away. Um, right, and so she's done. She moved, she attacked, and then she finished her move. Bilbo says, I could go in, but you know what? He's stunned. I'm going to come over here and check out this book. First action, we're going to uh, check out the mysterious book. A book with cracked and aged binding is lying on the ground. Search, please. You pick up the book, and the leather binding crackles under your touch. Test your wisdom. And we need to get two successes. 
Turns out Bilbo is not very wise. He only has a wisdom of two. I need to get two successes drawing only two cards. I do have some, um, some inspiration, so I might get lucky. Let's see what happens. Um, one, two, and... All right, I could get one success, but that's not enough. So I failed. I've drawn those. Fail. Okay. Uh, the flourish script is too ornate to parse the words. At least the pictures are nice, and you place the book back where you found it. Okay. So I could try again. Uh, I could do a second action. And I have now upped my chances, but I know it's not particularly good for me to do it. Barovor should totally do this, because she has three wisdom, so she has a better base stat for that than me. So I think I'm not going to go on ahead and check out the book again. We'll leave it for Barovor. And instead... I am going to start moving now. Remember, I get to do two actions with a single move. I'm going to come in here, and because I have traveled in this area, we get to reveal what happens when we explore. Explore? Confirm. The winding dirt track peters off into the woodland. Discard the exploration token. And you don't discard it. You actually get to flip it and turn it into inspiration. Nice. Alrighty. A collection of stones inscribed with a sigil is nearby, stacked into a pile. And place the search icon, as indicated. And you can actually see, um, it, it is there's a nice bit of attention to detail. Generally, if you look at the picture, hey, there are stones! There is kind of a little clearing stony type thing over there. So put it over there. Although, I mean, you, I mean, it's this whole area. So, what else? My journey continues. Oh, nothing else. I was expecting we were going to put some more tiles out here, but that did not happen. Alrighty, so I guess I need to go check out um, this collection of stones. Alrighty, well, I'm, I've moved once. Now, let's... Uh, right, first of all, I searched the book, and now I'm moving. I'm going to finish my move, and I'll be over here to check out the collection of stones a little later on. Uh, but I can't do it right now, because I'm out of actions. And Barovor, she went in, uh, attacked, stunned the guy, ran away, couldn't be provoked. And so, we're done again. Shadow time! Boop! Shadow phase! Uh, your pursuit has been too slow. The last of the bandits escape, disappearing from sight! Remove the ruffian enemy group from the map. Da-da-da! Dun-dun-dun! All right, well, if there was going to be any, th any information to be had for beating all these guys, we took too long, and these run away. Uh, apparently, he wasn't so stunned that he couldn't just totter off into the shadows. And he's gone. All righty. Sudden movement draws our eye. To our surprise, a goblin breaks cover and sprints away, disappearing into a wall of brambles. We follow him with haste and find, beyond the thicket, a wide valley dotted with a few ruins, but no, uh, few ruins, but no sign of the creature. Lore increases by one. Now, lore is a stat that is tracked by the app. At the end of this adventure, we can spend our lore, like experience, to level up our characters. Because I only have level 1, 2, and 3 of Bilbo. Or, no, I've, no, I've got all my Bilbo cards. But as a musician, I might want... Oh, where the heck are they? There's a whole bunch of them. Oh, here they are. Here's the big deck. Uh, there's all our pathfinding. There are 12 cards for each type of class. I only have the basic three, but I could learn a bit of nonsense. Endless Wonder, Durin's Song, uh, the, the Lay of... Uh, Nimrodel, etc., etc., as I level up more and more by earning more lore. But anyway, that's for later. Hey! Place 205A as indicated. Alrighty. Let's go back to my twos. It's a long... Is it this one? Yes. 205 as indicated. Need to zoom out a little bit there, bud. Alright, so that comes up here like, like this. Alrighty. And that means we're going to have to move you over here and move you guys... Out of the way, discard pile. There we go. Out of the way, draw pile. All righty. There we go. The world has gotten bigger. Nothing more over here. Let's just go put it off the side. All righty. Place 205 as indicated. Place 301A as indicated. Where's deck? Or here is the 300s. 301. 301A. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go again. So 301A. Hey, there's a big... A uh, big lake. All right, so let's actually go on ahead. You don't need to see a draw pile and discard pile. Let's just scooch everything over. Bring our map back. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, there we go. 301A, as indicated. Continue. Ah, oh, we got two new places to explore. Uh, to, to give chase to that goblin who's running away. 
All right. What has drawn such a creature here? Far beyond the reach of any orc stronghold. Its armor bore resemblance to that of Mount Graham. But far to the north does that mountain stand. A dark alliance has been formed indeed for such a creature to be summoned here. You must find tracks leading to the enemy's lair to continue. Searching the surrounding area will yield the clues and the tracks you need. Tracks needed? Three. So, uh, objective updated. Find clues to locate the hidden lair. Tracks needed three. So we gotta find three tracks. The shadow deepens, though hope yet endures. Threat increases by six. And we haven't seen our first event yet. And now, the rally phase. Each hero resets their deck! And then scouts too. Okay. Well, how exciting is that, folks? Alrighty, and we can see, by the way, that there's still going to be something over in this area. Um, as we continue to explore, I might have to go on ahead and move Bilbo up there or something like that to make room for it on the camera. But uh, we get to we get to reshuffle our deck. We get to scout, which means we get even more cards at the ready. And by the way, if I ever have four and I want to put a fifth one down, I can just discard one. So I could put Gollum here following me, my weakness, back into my deck if I want. But anyway, so we're going to have to shuffle, we're going to have to scout, and we've got new areas to explore. But there's still the mysterious stones in the book and the flowers. What to do next? Well, folks, if you want to find out, you can hit that eye up in the top right corner of the screen and go to the extended playthrough. We'll keep playing. I'm not saying I'm going to finish this adventure, but you'll just get to see how some more stuff evolves. Maybe some more combat, maybe some more tests, maybe some more surprises. Or you can go to Final Thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.